welcome back to X Level Inc. for our Happy Empowerment Hour. I am so excited to bring to you one of my dear friends who's really become a little brother to me that I truly love and adore. It's been 10 years of friendship with an amazing artist that I cannot wait to introduce you to, Rex Hausman. Thank you for joining us, Rex. Thanks for having me. Sounds wonderful. So Rex, you know, you have had such a prolific career. You're somebody that what I love about you is you're also a philosopher amongst uh, being an amazing artist. There is amazing art within our city, within the nation, but you've also had shows in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. And I would love our audience today to talk more about not just your amazing career, but some of our fabulous memories, because I think the philosophy of how you approach life can really give people a lot of lessons. So we share that with our audience today. Well, I think um, an art career is something that you need to look at over a long period of time. So yeah. to all you artists out there, um, my hope is that you'll take some words to heart, which uh, a very nice curator who's an incredible guy, Rene Barrio, gave to me. Look at art as a train track, and there's many stops along the way on the train, but it's one linear path that you keep going on. So although there's a lot of stops, you just keep going in one direction. Which is a wonderful thing to know, you know, in going in that one direction. You know, you're also a young artist mm -hmm. by artistic terms, yet what you've done at SCAD and what you've done, you know, I remember that you had a gunshot there. And I remember yep. you coming into my office and your approach to life was just such from a positive perspective. I actually still have that art piece in my office because very few people would have gone through life and forgiven as quickly as you did. And that to me is so prolific. That speaks to your essence mm. of a human being. But when we talk about this, you know, we have a great memory that we share together. And it was, you give so many gifts to everybody else. It was a way for Kyle, Henry, and Ramiro and I to give you back a gift of a show in New York. Tell every, our audience about that memory. So the memory is pretty amazing. Um, it was about a three year process. I was approached by the Sheen Center uh, yeah. with a solo exhibition and then leveraged kind of that from the get-go. I said, all right, I'm going to plan a group show down the street with 42 other artists uh, in conjunction with my solo show. Do, would you mind? Right. And uh, the Sheen Center didn't quite get the idea at first, but then over time they got it, got behind it. And then a small project called the All Things Project, where, which I had my first show at in New York almost 11 years ago because of a curator named Sam Coe and another right. guy named Kurt Vanderswa. Um, it all kind of came together and uh, we were planning this show. I had a residency in New York the year before and then the exhibition a year later and Siglali said, hey, we got this thing. It's not going to happen, but it may happen. And I was like, what? It's a little dinner party. <laughs> and I was like, okay, a little dinner party, you know, how big can it be? We got all these artists up here. I got my family up here. How are we going to break away for a dinner? How big is this dinner party? Oh, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's not that big a deal. Just don't. I, but, I said a curated, intimate dinner to celebrate you. I don't think you wanted to hear what I said, but yeah, yes, go ahead. She kept playing it down because she knew that I was going to be busy, but she was right. keeping a great surprise. Yes. And that's what I'm trying to build up to is there's all this like, play it low, play it low, play it low. And when your expectations are met, exceeded, and almost blow your mind, it's like incredible. Um, especially when you're in the art world because you've kind of seen everything. This was something completely different. I pull up in my cab to MoMA. I'm like, okay, little dinner party at MoMA? No, it's the door next to MoMA. Oh, okay, okay. I go in the lobby and there's a Picasso. And I'm like, okay, okay. Then I go up the elevator and I'm like, there's an Andy Goldsworthy in the hallway. Okay. Then we go into the apartment, which is incredible. And there's yes. like uh, Vic Munoz. There's like every art history icon. Salvador Dali, yeah. For orda, hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> yes. This isn't even a dinner yet. Yeah. And you're just like, I'm 42 stories above MoMA. This is insane. <laughs> what, where am I? And then like you look out and there's the expanse of Manhattan. And you're like, you got to be kidding me. There's like an aerial serenade chair there and all kinds of stuff. And... Then the party starts, and it's not just a little party. There's like 25 people there that are from Gucci and film and 
you know, uh, writers and Ramiro and Siglali and Kyle and Henry and just all these people. And you're like, this is insanity. And they're like, no, the dinner hasn't started. And I'm like, what? This isn't the dinner? <laughs> no, this is hors d'oeuvres. Let's go up to the roof. You go up to this roof and you're just like, okay, this is a, a different experience. You know, you hear of New York rooftop parties, right? which is like this thing. Well, this was a thing. There's like gladiolas shooting out, which were my grandmother's favorite. I mean, just tons of them. Oh. This gigantic table that goes on for like 200 feet. Yeah. And then Siglali had said, hey, send me some images of your paintings. We're going to use them as a surprise. And I looked down and there are my paintings all over the entire dinner table. We and made them the placemats. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is insane. Where do I sit? They're like there. I'm like. At the center of the table? Why? You're like, well, this is your, this is your yeah. dinner. And I'm like, this is the little dinner? Okay. And I'm just like, I, nobody's going to believe this even happened. And I have to tell you, the day of the dinner, because it, I worked with my sweet friend Gabriel and Henry and Kyle, it was one of those things that what I love to do is to curate experiences. Uh, it was an experience. And to surpass an expectation and to expand somebody's circle. But to me, when you told me the story of how important the MoMA was to you, oh, yeah. and I knew that this exhibit was important, that, and the conversation there all started from a fashion show that we did together yeah. at Neiman Marcus that led to all this and everything coming full circle yeah. with time, and knowing that divine timing is there, my best surprise was seeing your eyes when you open up and you're like, that's the MoMA sculpture garden is mm -hmm. right under us. That to me was like, I don't know, like I just felt amazing because you deserved it because you thought of not only your show at the Sheen Center, but you really thought of 42 artists and making their first show in New York. You sacrificed yourself in the process. I was like, you know what? No, this is about Rex. I want to make sure Rex realizes what he has accomplished because you're such a beautiful giver. That was our turn to give back to you. Well, that, that was, was beautiful. I think for anybody watching this, my hope is that you would understand the the beauty of relationships with right. people. And like, this isn't a new thing for us. You know, mm -hmm. I'll call Sigla, what's up big sis? Big little sis. <laughs> yes. And uh, I like to say I look younger. <laughs> yeah, and we just, it's just, it's always a conversation. There's always something interesting to talk about. Yeah. Um, I remember before MoMA, there was a little burger place. Siglali had some huge event and she's like, hey, where are you? I'm like, I'm on residency at the Sheen, why? Let's go to lunch. I'm like, let's go. Meet me at the Half King, which isn't there anymore, but mm -hmm. I would meet my best friend John Cowan for burgers there when we barely had enough money to even pay for the, the subway to get there. Wow. And so I was like, meet me on this street and this street in Chelsea. It's a place called the Half King. And we had this two hour lunch about yeah. very sincere subject matter. Right. It's about careers, it's about life, it's about art, it's about intentions. But more than anything, it's really about like, a conversation that's going back and forth. No, definitely. And on that, one thing that I would love to note, because we're talking about relationships, but since this is the Happy Empowerment Hour, I know time is so important to you, and it's a conversation we've had, we've philosophized, and we've had many great conversations yeah. about. But what advice would you give someone? Because I think that regardless if you're an artist, if you're creative, if you're just a person that's going through right now this time that we've been going through in COVID, and <laughs> everything i think right now that's so important for people to know what would your message be well on the outside of our buildings at my family buildings is grow where you're planted and during this time i mean for we're almost going on six months now you right. know i've been gardening obsessively and mm -hmm. i always love the metaphor of plants and gardens because not only do they give to like the greater good meaning right. like it generates air and oxygen it's visually beautiful and God's creation is just the most neat thing with an ecosystem. So to really grow a garden, it takes time, right. both on a micro and a macro. Yes. Macro meaning you got to have a vision, right? Right. Then you got to have the micro, which is you got to water the thing every day. You right. got to give it food. You got to nurture it. And what's funny in that process of daily commitment to something, it gives you way more than you give it. Right. And if you tend to the garden, if you tend to your studio, if you tend to your relationships, right. and they're deep and meaningful, right. then really beautiful things happen. Right. And I think that's where 
if you were to talk about painting like the ones you right. see like this is my brother and this is me struggling over life saying like is this it and we actually were at a, a party together yeah. on new year's eve and it was like on new year's it's who you spend time with and you see the sunrise every day these are uh wine glasses oh, wine glasses we had that from night. the party and siglali had said hey i want to challenge you something before the new year starts i'm like what make an art piece i'm like okay well it's not going to make sense until later and so this is paper which is temporal but there's three pieces right. um it's a big white space which is kind of calming so whatever i'm going to say it needs to say it but then there's this struggle between myself and my brother which we're both very very close and uh, Siglali is actually the Jade Jaguar up there. Have you seen the frame? Oh, yeah. Right up oh, there. Oh, there I am. Um, yes. See, I'm officially part of the, a part yep. of the family. She's a part of and the family. And I frame. did wear this in your honor because I know that was how you And so it. even within these art pieces, I'm talking about just life itself. What's important, you know? Um, even in the ball cap, Siglali had said, what's important to you? It's like, this is a Yankees hat, yes, but this is my first apartment in New York on 72nd and Riverside. And so when you're carrying things around with you, when you're going at your daily everything, have little reminders that keep you rooted to why you're doing what you're doing. Right. So if I could have a message for the empowerment hour yeah. with Siglali, yeah. um, it would be uh, take what you have around you and make something wonderful. That can be cooking a dish for your family. Mm -hmm. Right now we're all stuck in our apartments or our homes. Like I have a birthday party coming up and I can't invite friends over because you just got to be around family. Yeah. Which, look at the beauty in that. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like look in where well, I'm spending way too much time with my nephews. Wait, I should be spending too right. much time with my nephews. Right. You know, I'm spending way too much time with the family. Wait, maybe I should spend too much time. Right. And I think in this time there's a lot of beauty long term that's going to come out and i think that i love what you're saying because it's in perspective and mm. that's a conversation you and i have often is too many times people can't get out of their head and you have to leave that's why like for myself i had to go to malibu recently yeah just to get out to breathe in that fresh air to give myself perspective to come back to be better for the team and to be better for the company so we can actually have a better interview. Yeah. And I also think that when we're talking about timing, you and I talk a lot about, about we didn't write the script. Mm. Somebody bigger than us is writing the script and we're going along in the, in the path and the ride. And so funny for everyone that's out there, we were trying to do this over technology because we're all being safe. We're six feet apart from each other. Um, and what was interesting to that is it wasn't working. I just said, you know what? It's not working today. Let's go do it in person. And now that we're here, this is what was meant to be. I think so. And what's funny is today, until you reminded me, I forgot this was a New Year's piece. And I just picked it. I said, oh, Crystal, will you please, let's put this in the shot. This piece is speaking to me. And right now it's funny. It's, and I just it's had just it out of storage. Like, literally, what's funny about this is this was in storage two weeks ago. And I just wanted to have it around to finish this piece for the scout guide. And I was like, I want my brother with me. And then uh, Siglali saw it and was like, hey, I like this piece. Yeah. And it has some of our studios here, Gary Williamson and Fred Jesse. Um, this is Barbara Fuchs and the people who are around you. Simone right. did that. And um, I think there's a lot of beauty that's going to come out of all this. And I would say that one thing I love about you, your artwork and your persona, is you truly appreciate the smallest memory from something. <laughs> Uh, something that you'll see in my office if you ever come over is this fabulous pink cat that waves back and forth. My fun money cat, I like to say my abundance cat, that you gave to me. But it's something that just reminds us of something that's fabulous. So what I encourage the audience in Rex's honor is today after, after watching this video, go and find something that makes you smile, brings back a memory, and keep it with you on your toughest days whether it's in your wallet or if it's big enough that you can put in a purse, a fabulous one if you want to carry one around, that's not a problem. Um, was I you, but just something that's going to resonate because it'd be, it's interesting how that's what art does is it brings out an expression of what it is. And that I think is what you do best. Mm. So I have a question. Do you ever declutter? No. 
<laughs> Actually, after I finish this painting that I'm working on, it's a 14 foot painting. Yes, I do. Like literally, I have to clean, but it's not often. Like if you notice at the mill, all of our common spaces, the hallways, the garden is not perfect, but very nice. You go into my studio, it's a bomb blast. Like yeah. it's like this is my little. Wait, nest, what's your you creative know? space? But what I notice about when you're painting is everything that's in there has a purpose. Oh yeah. And then, and, and it's so funny because I'll pick it up and, you're, and you can give me a dissertation <laughs> on something, which I think is beautiful <laughs> in our relationship because you teach me so much about that beauty. But in summarizing our conversation, that's why you're so important for hmm. people to understand and to recognize as an artist is you are truly captivating the essence of humanity. Hmm. And I cannot wait to see where you are in 20 years because I really know that what I'm seeing before me is a philosopher and something someone if you haven't noticed this artwork please take notice because I will tell you this he's not only a dear friend and I might be biased a little brother but I will tell you it's your essence and your soul mm. beyond what you do here that really I love that your paintings captivate oh well thanks so well, Thank I think you. to close the loop of the reason after something really awful happened, which right. is getting shot, which sucks. I would not recommend it to anybody. Um, if you have to go through it, fine, whatever. You know, like God just had a different plan. And um, going to the office, we went to Neiman Marcus and in particular to see if you were there because it just made me happy. Aww. You know, I was in a wheelchair with my mom and we were walking around La Terra and we're like, let's go to Neiman Marcus. Why? Let's see if Sigla is there. See what's up. And she's like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, well, I, you know, kind of got shot. And she's like, what? Right. No, it was, why are you in a wheelchair? You know, right. like, what? And um, I think that if you surround yourself with good people, if you surround yourself with your family and your loved ones and the people that are close to you, you can tackle almost anything. Right. And you know that that core is there. You know that those people are there. That's why this frame mm. literally surrounds the old truck, which is my granddad. And there's a picture that I look up every day at my granddad right there as I walk in and Richard Tice and Joyce. And I'm going to put a new flower in there every day to say, mm. if you guys could do it, so can I. Right. And so that's why surrounding the memory of the truck, that was his old green truck. That's actually Denise and Mark Homer's piece. Uh, mm -hmm. They have an old green truck and they commissioned this work. And my dad and I worked on it together in the frame, which we were actually oh. supposed to do a day yeah. in my dad's workshop. It just never worked out yeah, because of COVID and all the right. stuff we have to do at the buildings. I don't think we had any idea what was going to happen. Right. But in a way, we did we, it. We still did it. We're still here full circle yeah. on its own because so, we didn't even plan it. It's see, that's how you need thing. to like look at something. Even in that, we all wanted to get together and do something and it didn't happen. But really with COVID, who can plan anything? Right. So now yeah. we're doing it, you yeah, know? Yeah, now we're doing it. And my it. dad's here, my mom's here, my brother's here, you're here, you yeah. guys are here. Yes, even my brother had to come. To even Jake had to come. To come. I, know, I love See, it. See, like, that's yeah. what's coming out of COVID. Right. Is that. And just right. to know that moment. Jacob, hey man, can you get me a camera? Yeah, sure. Fine. Right. Why? Okay. Well, yeah. And then Jacob's here. And it's just like, that's the beauty in of all life. of this. Yeah. Well, without further ado, everyone, I hope that you've learned a lot from my fabulous friend Rex. What I learned today was everything comes full circle. So pay attention to your circle, see what you're surrounding yourself with and look at how we're all evolving greater together. Because at the end of the day, we're all a beautiful summary, but I hope that you look at life as bright as my fabulous friend Rex does. Because at the end of the day, all that truly matters are the amazing relationships we have with each other, because that's what's gonna evolve us to the next level. So without further ado, thank you so much Rex for being with us. Thank you audience for being with us. And don't forget to subscribe because at the end of the day, you never know what fabulous friends you're going to meet because it could be somebody fabulous just like Rex. Thank you everyone. Bye. So this is the studio. Yes. This is the office. And then Next these are year. all of our people, all of our 
This is the Dios. And we're about to go out to the garden. Man, if I can get a hold of that one, I will. <laughs> like, I'm going to put it in here. Uh, excuse me, no, I get first. <laughs> You're like, it's going in my backyard, man. Yes. Yeah, so and then my mom. Is... See the little butterflies? Oh, they're beautiful, yeah. Little bees and butterflies. Aww. And then these are new. These are two years old. Uh, always got a, got a, uh, this is a solar-powered fountain. If you want to yeah. feed yeah. the fountain, and you'll see it wake up. Oh, yeah. Just keep oh, going. Cool. Pour the whole thing in there. Oh, I love it. Isn't that great? That is fabulous. And so three or four times a day, I got to come out and fill this thing up. That is so cool. So do you ever put this like position a little bit further up? Sorry, you know me and trying to... Well, what's interesting about this is we had a, two ducks. That. Now we have eight because uh -huh. of this. Really? And you have to put these in there because they get scared. But oh. if they see another bird... They're not They're scared. Okay. Huh. Isn't that cool? And you have a cool artistic one. I, yep. Look how beautiful Talibari, this thing man. I love it. This is my grandmother's ashtray. Aww. Actually, these are the aromatics. So go with a little basil plant. And let me water it for a sec and then just smell. Just take the mask off. And it just, oh, it smells amazing. Isn't it great? Yeah. Oh, wow. And then the Romans. Oh, your mom, I would oh, yeah. The Romans used to do this to make themselves happy. Uh huh. Just rub it in your hands and then smell it. You can even smell through your mask. You're right. I can still smell through the mask. And then the these two. And you rub this in your hand. And you know me, I'm going to combine the both. Oh, yeah. And that's what the Romans would do. Oh, wow. 2,000 years old. Aromatic therapy, like the original. The original aromatherapy. I love it. And that's why we put this here and this here so that when people come, this is like some kind of mint of something. I don't know what this one is. It's like tarragon or something. I can't remember, but I didn't know that it flowered, and I let it flower. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. That's the garden. I love it. Thank you.